Okay, today we have one of the most ambitious videos I've ever created. Actually, no, not one of the most ambitious video I've ever created. This will most likely be the longest video I've ever posted. So if you need something to either put you to sleep or blow your mind, strap in. Today, I'm going to be explaining Nen. And I wish for even one second that that was as easy as it sounds. For anybody who knows me even a little bit, you'll know Hunter x Hunter is my favorite anime of all time. My arm tells the story. I'm not kidding. I have like seven Hunter x Hunter characters tattooed on my arm. See if you can count them all. The unfortunate reality of this video, though, is it's not about Naruto. So it will be the most work I ever put into a video, but it will most likely not do as many views as me talking about even Granny Chiu. So if you're a Hunter x Hunter fan out there, please, for me, like this video, subscribe to the page, and hit that noti bell, and maybe send this to another Hunter x Hunter fan. I'm not kidding. This video is going to take me a full day to make. It is 2.45 right now. You will probably see the sun set on my face. And if you really appreciate the effort I'm putting in here, go ahead and hit that join button. Become a member of the Weeb Alliance over here on YouTube. You'll be getting three additional videos from me a month, cool badges, emotes, and member shoutouts at the end of every video. With no further ado, let's get to Nen. So today we're going to venture out to answer a couple of questions. What is Nen? How do you achieve Nen? What are the specific types of affinity for Nen and what are its special abilities? Every one of these questions has a part A through J under it, like those times when your teacher said, it's only a three question test. But for now, let's start with something simple. What is Nen? Well, in its most basal sense, Nen is aura. Think of it a bit like chakra or spiritual pressure, but it's different from both of those things because while every human does technically have aura, Nen is the use of manipulating your aura. Most humans aura just eventually fades away from them as they get older and weaker. But Nen users can make this aura into a weapon or a defensive shield. And those who can use Nen are known as Nen users and those who can't are used as non-users. Okay, that was pretty easy. So let's get into the specifics of aura. See, aura usually flows without an individual's awareness, amassing at the head because all aura flows in a singular direction. But this leads to a slow leak of aura out the top of non-users' heads. Specifically, aura leaves from the the aura node on top of the human head. You see, a bit like Shino's holes where bugs climb out, there is aura nodes all throughout the body where aura escapes from. Usually, losing a little bit of aura is completely natural. It won't hurt you. But if your aura nodes get blasted wide open and you start to lose aura rapidly, you will quickly get fatigued and no longer be able to move. On the opposite end of this, if you close your aura nodes when you're fatally injured, you can stop that injury from being fatal. Look at how Netero was able to basically close his leg wound against Marowem. Controlling these aura nodes is the first step in becoming a Nen user. You can't use Nen if you're always losing aura. I mean, I guess you can, but you won't be good at it. Aura is also invisible. That is, until you open the aura nodes in your eyeballs. Essentially, allowing aura to leak out of your eyeballs allows you to see the aura of other people. But you don't have to see aura to understand if somebody has it or not. Many people can feel other people's aura without seeing it. Specifically, if the aura being directed at them is hostile. They say the feeling of hostile aura being directed at you is akin to needles prickling your skin. And if you are truly not trained at all in Nen, and somebody sends a huge wave of evil aura your way, it can kill you. In order to stop the effect of malevolent aura on you, though, you have to master 10, which is one of the four principles in learning Nen. So let's talk about learning Nen. There's two ways to open your aura nodes. One is through a lot of training so that one day you can open them on your own and then control the flow of your own aura. This is usually achieved through meditation. But the other way to achieve this is a thing called initiation. Technically, the direct Japanese translation is baptism. Essentially, those who want to have their aura nodes opened receive a large influx of aura from somebody who can control their aura, a Nen user. But this way is generally frowned upon. Let's say you use initiation on Hisoka. Now, with very little work and very little time, Hisoka can control his aura, making him incredibly more powerful. So if he had malicious intent to hurt somebody, he can now achieve that even faster. There's also the possibility that those who you initiate may not be able to close their aura nodes. And if this is the case, their aura 
will just escape them rapidly and they'll die. And this is actually a common practice in the Heavens Arena. Once you hit the 200th floor in the Heavens Arena, it's almost entirely Nen users. But if a Nen user sees a non-user reach the 200th floor, they will attack them with a Nen attack and forcibly open their aura nodes. And this will either permanently damage or kill the person on the floor. And then that Nen user doesn't have to worry about that person anymore. But an experienced Nen user like Wing can just use Hatsu on people and boom, their aura nodes are open. But now that you've opened your aura nodes, you don't just know Nen. There's four major principles you have to master before you can bring them all together and use Nen, aka manipulate your aura. Gon and Kilua learned the Nen of Flame technique, referred to as the Shingen Ryu Kung Fu style of Nen. Under Wing, they were taught meditation-esque like exercises in order to master the four principles. Those four principles being Ten, Zetsu, Ren, and Hatsu. But those are just words, so let's go over what every single one of them means. The way the Wing taught Kilowatt and Gon Ten was essentially explaining meditation. He told them to focus the mind, focus on their self, and determine the goal. But that doesn't really tell us what Ten is, just how we can use it. Ten is essentially the act of stopping your aura from flowing away from you. At this point, your aura nodes are open, which would imply that more aura than usual is leaving your body. So Ten is a meditative state of stopping your aura from flowing out the top of your head and instead flowing it around your body in a continuous cycle. Essentially, it's shrouding yourself in aura in an infinite rate because this aura will never leave you. And when 10 is actually finally achieved, it's said that your aura feels like a warm, viscous fluid. And by stopping your aura from leaving you, you can actually slow your aging. It's why Netero lived for so long. 10 is the most basic defensive measure in a Nen user's arsenal. It will protect you from physical attacks like punches, kicks, knives, bullets, but it will not protect you well, at least from Nen enhanced attacks. And as one gets better with Nen through meditation or just practice, you will be able to maintain it even in your sleep. Next, we have Zetsu, which Wing described as put your thoughts into words. He says you can do this either mentally or verbally, but that doesn't explain at all what Zetsu does, because Zetsu is actually the exact opposite of Ten. While Ten is controlling the aura leaving your body and shrouding your entire body with it, Zetsu is closing your aura nodes. Zetsu ceases your aura function, which makes you incredibly hard to detect. And I know what you're saying, well, wouldn't that leave you susceptible? to Nen attacks? Absolutely. Especially considering that if you use Zetsu, you have to shut off the aura nodes in your eyes, meaning you can no longer see aura, but since you are no longer enveloped in your own aura, because you can't use Ten in Zetsu simultaneously, you are more susceptible to other people's aura, so you can sense other people's aura close by. It's really good for assassins or hunters, because everything on Earth can sense aura to a small degree. But Zetsu is useful in situations that aren't stalking. Since you're ceasing the outflow of aura, Zetsu is actually very good for healing. With all of your aura trapped inside of your body and not around it or leaving it, you're able to heal faster. That brings us to Ren. Wing describes Rem as intensifying your will. And this is one of the only times where what Wing said lined up with what Ren actually does. Because Ren is increasing the amount of aura that comes from your body. Well, at least it's increasing the amount of aura over 10. Essentially, you take 10 and you make it into Ren. In that, you envelop yourself in a shroud of aura and then you explode that aura out explosively. This is fundamentally important if you want to use high level Nen abilities. Because you need a deep pool of aura to pull from to use things like Karapika's Chains or Jaja Ken. The only problem is the explosive outpouring of this Nen is very exhaustive. It's said that you need to train for one month to increase your Ren output for 10 minutes outside of combat. This is because in combat, aura is always lost. There's nobody who's in a fight and is losing absolutely no aura. If 10 is a shield, Ren is the sword. But Ren also increases your defenses because by having more aura at your disposal, you can apply more aura to a certain area to block an attack. Ren is what we see Hisoka and Illumi use against Kilawa and Gon in the first couple of episodes of Hunter x Hunter. That purplish little wavy cloud stuff referred to as bloodlust is actually Hisoka and Illumi admitting their Ren lined with malice in order to impart their will upon 
Kilawa, and Gone. And this bloodlust makes you incredibly easy to track. But ironically, Ren that isn't lined with Malice is very hard to track or even sense. And lastly, we have Hatsu. Wing describes Hatsu as putting your thoughts into action. And that's actually almost exactly what it is. Hatsu is your personal expression of Nen, which is usually influenced by your Nen category, but is not essential. Using Hatsu allows you to, if you're an enhancer, enhance your strength. If you're a conjurer, use Nen bullets like Franklin. Essentially, Hatsu allows you to use Nen. And once you've truly mastered Hatsu, you can begin to impart your own will in Nen. Basically, make your own Nen techniques that are reflective of your personality and your skills. See, that's the difference between Nen and Chakra. Chakra you build up in order to learn previous Jutsus. And sure, new Jutsus get made every once in a while, but every Nen user has separate abilities. Because Hatsu and therefore Ren are largely dependent on A, your Nen affinity, and B, your personality. Hisoka has Bungie. Gum. Franklin has Nen bullets. Gone has Jaja Ken. But we're talking a lot about Nen affinity here, so let's talk about Nen affinity. Much in the same way that there's chakra natures in Naruto, and each individual ninja has a chakra nature that they're predisposed to. Kakashi has lightning, Sasuke has lightning, Naruto has wind. In Hunter Hunter, there is Nen affinities. These aren't based off earth, wind, and fire. No, they're based off a couple of different semi abstract concepts. And in order to find out your Nen ability, you do a water divination test. Essentially, you get a glass of water and you put a leaf on top of it. Does that sound familiar to how they test it in Naruto? Just a quick by the by, guys. Naruto takes a lot from Hunter x Hunter. But let's talk about water divination results. If the volume of the water changes, then you're an enhancer. If the taste of the water changes, you're a transmuter. If impurities appear in the water, then you're a conjurer. If the color of the water changes, then you're an admitter. If the leaf moves on the water's surface, then you're a manipulator. And if a completely different change appears, then you're a specialist. A completely different change would be like the leaf lights on fire. But think of Nen affinities in a hexagon. There are six of them. And this hexagonal shape is actually very important. If you're an enhancer, then you can be 100% effective in your enhancing abilities. And then the two abilities next to enhancement, you can be 80% effective in. And then the two below that, you're 60% effective in. And the one directly across from enhancement, you are 40% effective in. However, However, this doesn't technically apply to enhancers because opposite of enhancers is specialists. Well, actually, this isn't unique to enhancers. I'm sorry. You can't partially use specialization techniques. If you yourself are not a specialist, you cannot be 80%, 60%, 40% effective in specialization. Conjurers and manipulators can turn into specialists later in their life, but that's rare. But we've been saying these names a lot and we haven't explained what each one of them does. So let's go ahead and do that. I should also say that specialists are the only people who are able to use all six techniques because they are specialists and therefore specialization isn't something they can half use, but they're only 40% effective at enhancement. Usually training in one's 100% Nen affinity is what's recommended because while Nen users can make Nen abilities out of their 100% category, it will A, be less effective and B, might cause something that Hisoka called memory overload, meaning that by training in things that aren't their Nen affinity, they can wear themselves out on the use of Ren and stagnate their growth. The only two real exceptions to this rule are Netero and Bisky. Bisky goes so far as to say that training outside of your Nen affinity actually helps you train in your own Nen affinity. But the further you get from your 100% Nen affinity, the less time you should spend on that Nen affinity. So for Gon, who's an enhancer, conjuration and manipulation should be the ones he spends the least on. And your Nen affinity is largely based upon your personality. Let's get into what the Nen affinities do and the personality that usually is tied to them. Let's start with the easiest one, enhancers. Enhancers are able to use Nen in order to increase the strength of an object or their own body. Well, I shouldn't say strength, just general ability. Enhancers will usually strengthen their bodies to increase their defensive might and their offensive might. In the case of Ugovin, one of the Phantom Troop, his body was more durable than a tank, and one blow with his right arm was stronger than a missile. That being said, enhancement is actually the most balanced category. While we rarely see male enhancers do anything to spread themselves out of the enhancer category, they have the most promise to do so. And enhancers can go further than you can't stab me, I can punch you. They can use their enhancement to 
to increase their healing factor or increase the growth factor of a target like a tree or a plant. But we rarely see this because most enhancement Nen users, knowing that they have the most balanced offense defense capability, usually use very simple Nen techniques very strongly. I mean, Gon's techniques are a punch, a slap, and a slice. Because of this, enhancers are usually considered very simple and straightforward. They're also very determined, like Gon or Ugovit. By the way, all of these emotional assessments were done by Hisoka, so I guess take them with a grain of salt. Most enhancers never lie and get directly to the point whenever they're talking to you. They're also very emotional, meaning they're not necessarily logical. Most of their choices are determined by feelings, and they're as determined to finish their goals as anybody on Earth. Next, let's talk about transmuters like Kilua. Transmuters are able to change the properties of their aura to mimic something else, like Kilua does with his lightning. Kilua is not creating lightning. He's changing his aura to mimic lightning. Creating lightning would be conjuration. On top of this, transmuters can change the shape of their Nen, meaning that Kilua could make his Nen a long pole that extends out of his chest or a really big circle or a triangle, which comes in particularly handy for some of the advanced Nen techniques that we'll talk about later. Similar to admission though, all of these constructs are pure Nen, meaning that Kilua's lightning is invisible to people who can't use Nen. This is different from conjuration because conjuration turns Nen into a physical object. And this is where transmutation and conjuration get mixed up. But the biggest difference is transmutation, once again, is pure aura. It's mimicking a substance while conjuration makes the physical substance. Well, Kilua and Hisoka are incredible examples of transmutation. Kilua represents that you don't have to mimic the properties of something physical by using electricity. And Hisoka represents that you can take some properties of something and some properties of another thing and combine them to just change your aura's nature. Like with his bungee gum, which is stick with me here both sticky and stretchy transmuters are almost the exact opposite of enhancers they're whimsical and prone to deceit and lies isoka kilua starting to make sense they often put forth a facade of a personality while trying to hide their true feelings and they rarely speak on their true intentions because they're tricky think loki he would be the exact archetype of a transmuter next up we have emitters emitters have an easier time of separating their net from their body than any other group. What do I mean by that? Think about Ten and how you have to shroud yourself in aura. Or even when Nen is used defensively and you have to shift it to part of your bodies to block incoming blows. A mission is the opposite of that. It is controlling the aura that leaves your body in a direction. The only problem with admission is the farther your Nen gets from your body, the weaker it gets. Which makes sense. The Nen is slowly evaporating into the atmosphere. But as admitters get more adapt, they can control Control this Nen from a further distance away, allowing them to admit it long distances at full strength. Think Franklin's Nen bullets. Franklin is able to separate Nen from his fingertips and fire it in a direction. But this can also be used in non-projectile functions. You can also use it to propel yourself forward. Advanced applications of admission allow you to teleport or phase your aura through walls. Hell, we've even seen a mission combined with music in order to relieve fatigue. Leorio is a good example of an admitter, being able to teleport his punch to somewhere else by throwing his aura in a direction. Essentially, by throwing aura in a certain area he can create a portal there that he can punch through and teleport his arm to that other location. And Leorio is the perfect character study for an admitter. They are short-tempered, quick to react in a volatile manner, and not detail-oriented. They're very similar to enhancers in a lot of ways, except they don't have the dogged persistence that enhancers have, in that they'll give up or forgive much easier than an enhancer. Next up, we have Conjurers. To me, Conjuration is arguably the most interesting than Affinity, because Conjurers have have an ability to strengthen their abilities using self-imposed rules. But we'll get to that in a second. Conjurers are able to conjure objects out of their aura, be that a knife, a shield, Karapika's chains. And this is a material object. Everybody, even non-users, can see it. And the strength of a conjurer is usually determined on how strong this object is. Can it withstand a blow? Think of conjuration a bit like alchemy from Full Metal, except the conservation of mass is aura. And Karapika's kind of a bad example for a 
conjurer because a conjurer can create an object that can exist independently of them. Look at Cortope. Cortope can create a physical object that can exist for up to 24 hours, even if it is significantly far from them. Conjurers can also alter these conjured items to basically be whatever they want it to be. A conjurer could swing a dagger and while swinging it, extend it to be a sword. But conjuration has a lot of rules. You can't create things that go beyond human ability. You can't create a shield that blocks all Nen attacks. You can't create a sword capable of cutting through diamonds. But you can create things like in the circumstance of Shizuku, who creates a Nen vacuum that have special abilities. You see, Shizuku's vacuum is able to suck up anything infinitely, with the exception that it can't suck up living matter or things made of Nen, which is where we get into conditions. See, conjurers can make the items that they conjure stronger with self-imposed conditions. In Shizuku's case, it is this vacuum cannot suck up living things or things made from Nen, which allows her to suck up non-living things and non-Nen things infinitely. Kortopi is able to perfectly copy anything they touch, but those copies disappear in 24 hours. The more strict the self-imposed condition, the stronger the conjured item. It's like how Karapika says his chains will only ever be used against the Phantom Troop. Therefore, those chains are strong enough to hold Ugovin or take Krolo's Nen away. As for their personalities, conjurers are usually very high strong or overly serious, looking at you, Karapika. They're almost always on guard in order to be cautious and are incredibly logical and observant. Therefore, they rarely fall into traps or situations they can't get themselves out of. They are the polar opposite of enhancers. Analysis is the biggest strength of conjurers. Usually, the things they make on the self-imposed conditions that they use are very logical and straightforward and help them achieve their mission in the most efficient way possible. And this is one of the misconceptions about Karapika. People assume that his only ability is his Nen chains. So they assume that he will be useless against people who aren't the Phantom Troop. But Karapika can just create another item that is good against let's say Nen Beasts or the Zodiacs or specifically Jing Freaks and therefore Conjurers have one of the highest ceilings out of all Nen users. Up next we have Manipulation. Illumi is the best circumstance that we can use to explain manipulation and not just like emotional manipulation like Nen Manipulation. They'll both do apply in this circumstance. Manipulation allows you to control living and non-living things with your aura. This includes Aura Constructs. An Aura Construct is a bit like a Shadow Clone but it doesn't look like you. It's a thing that you create and then control. It's actually technically closer to a path of pain than anything. Manipulators are largely feared in the Nen user community because they can use your own body to fight you. But how well the manipulator is able to control this living or non-living thing is usually conditional. Look at Shalnark and Alumi. Shalnark has to get his antenna into you in order to control you with his cell phone. And Alumi needs to put pins in you and the more pins he has in you, the more he can control you. Both of these are conditions. They can't just look at you and control you. There is a small weakness to manipulation though, and that's that they are very weak to other manipulators. You cannot control something that's already being controlled through manipulation Nen. So Shalnark couldn't take one of Illumi's needle people. Manipulators can pour more aura into an object than any other class. And this is largely important because they usually have to control their aura constructs or living people from a large distance away. And sometimes they even have to control these constructs into complex tasks, driving a car, a fist fight. But then there's also circumstances like Illumi's needle people where with a minimum amount of Nen, he can simply send people into a frenzy or give them a very simple task like chase Kilowatt. There's technically four different kinds of mind control that manipulators can use to vary how much control they have over their living or non-living constructs, but we don't need to get into that. Manipulators are, believe it or not, manipulative and controlling, like my ex-wife Sharon. They, like conjurers, are very detail oriented, but tend to move at their own pace. They're also very protective of their loved ones and families, but that doesn't mean that they listen to them. When it comes to their own goals, they do not take anybody else's opinions into mind. And lastly, we have specialists. I am so tired. <laughs> Second wind. Specialists are technically just any Nen ability that doesn't fall within the categorization of the other five types. It's incredibly vague. If you look at an ability and you're like, I don't know what that is, it's probably a specialist ability. Like Krolo's ability to essentially manipulate Hatsu itself is a specialist ability. Essentially, Krolo is able to alter other people's Nen affinities and abilities and then create them 
himself. Neon is able to manifest a monster that is able to tell somebody's entire future or past events. The thing is, while we know how other Nen affinity types create their Nen abilities, they do it through hard work, meditation, all of those things, we don't necessarily know how specialists manifest their abilities. Neon got it by wishing for it during one of her birthdays as a child. Tessierdnich just got it one week after activating his Nen without training for it or wanting it. Specialists are known to be independent and charismatic, which is ironic because they usually try not to be close friends with anyone, but their natural charisma pulls people towards them. Carlo is a very good example of this, a leader of the Phantom Troop that every member of the Phantom Troop rallies around, but not necessarily close to any of them. Okay, so now that we've covered the basics of Nen and Nen typing, we should probably talk about some advanced techniques in subcategories of Nen. The first and most widely seen advanced technique of Nen is Gyo. Gyo is an application of Ren, which if you'll remember correctly, is the explosion of your aura outside of Ten. There's a big misconception that Gyo can only be used on your eyes. But in fact, Gyo is just the explosive release of aura to a specific body part, like your hand if you want to block a powerful technique, or your eyes if you want to vastly increase your eyesight. This is usually done to see faint traces of aura that you would usually miss. Next is Een. Eden is an advanced form of Zetsu, suppressing your aura. It's used to make your aura imperceptible, not to shut off your aura like Zetsu, but to make your aura invisible. Eden is so powerful that even Gyo cannot see it, making it perfect for sneak attacks or laying traps. This is how Karabika was able to catch Ugovin in his chains, because Eden can be applied to anything made of Nen, conjuration, transmutation, or even the user. If you apply Eden to your shroud of 10, you are invisible. Well, I lied. Experienced practitioners of Gyo can still see Eden, but this takes a lot of experience. Next up is N, not Eden. N. N is a combination of Ten and Ren. Essentially, N is when you expand your Ren, but you also have to use Ten at the same time to shape that expanded form. Nobunaga is the perfect example of this. Nobunaga creates a bubble around himself that if anybody enters, he will instantly slash with his EI Jutsu. It's like the, uh... The blue haired girl's simple domain in JJK. I'm gonna get some hate comments for calling her the blue haired girl. The minimum required extension of your rent in 10 for it to be considered N is two meters. But Xenozoldic, Kilowa's grandfather, is able to extend it to 300 meters. Cortipi's constructs technically act as Cortipi's N. Anything or anybody that touches one of these constructs is instantly identified and located by Cortipi. And Pito was able to extend their N for two kilometers, though not in a circle it was more of a wavy tendril like thing next there is Shu. Shu is an application of 10 that allows you to envelop something in your hand or in your mouth or something like that in your 10 let's say you're holding a sword but you use Shu to envelop that sword with your 10 now that sword is stronger Next is Ko. Ko is a combination of all of the four primary disciplines. Ten, Zetsu, Ren, Hatsu. Ko is actually how Gon uses Jajan Ken. You use Gyo in order to transfer all of your aura into one body part. Ten is used in order to stop this aura from dispersing elsewhere. Zetsu is used in order to stop your aura on every other part of your body. And Ren is used to boost the amount of aura in this area. And this is how we get Jaja Ken rock or paper or scissors. Next is is Ken, like Barbie's boyfriend. Barbie's boyfriend. Let's be real with ourselves here, Ken. Ken is just a combination of Ren and Ten. Remember earlier how I said Ten was a very basic defensive measure? Well, when somebody is able to maximize their Ren output and shape it with Ten and increase their Ten aura by Ten times, they achieve Ken, making it a Ten times more effective defensive measure. So yeah, Ken is just more powerful Ten. Some people go so far as to expand their Ken in order to see incoming attacks, like Kilua with the Swordfish. And lastly, we have Ryu. And not like Hadouken. Think of Ryu like adjusting Ken. Ken is a full body suit of equal strength Nen. It's good at protecting you from all sides. Ryu is the real-time adjustment of your Ken in order to block blows coming in specific areas. See somebody about to punch you in the face? Switch your Ken to here. But this requires incredibly high precision in Nen control. Now, there is a ton of subdivisions 
versions of Nen, like exorcism type, collaborative type, loan type, curse type. But for the sake of keeping this video under an hour and my editor not quitting, we're gonna skip past those. There is also literal equations to help you quantify aura. Like if a conjurer and an enhancer come into battle using AP, which is attack points and SP, which is sense points, you can figure out what amount of damage is going to happen and if a perfect attack hits a perfect block yeah I, I know it's insane but togashi is arguably the best mangaka of all time at fleshing out power systems which is why we're probably already a half hour into this video and i've skipped some of the minor details but basically all you need to take from these equations is that if an enhancer attacks a conjurer with an enhanced attack and therefore the conjurer has to use an enhanced defense the conjurer will take 40 percent damage if they perfectly block it with ryu this is because the conjurer is only 60% effective in enhancement. There is also a literal scaling system to every ability in Hunter x Hunter, and this scaling system goes from 1 to 10. Let's say Karapika's Chains are a level 10 conjuration ability. Only a level 10 conjurer could use this ability. But let's say hypothetically they're a level 6 ability. Well then a level 8 transmuter could use this ability, because a level 8 transmuter can use level 8 transmutation techniques and also 80% of conjuration techniques, which would be minus two on a one to 10 scale. Lastly, I feel like we should touch on conditions just one more time. We've already covered Blinky, the vacuum that can suck up anything infinitely as long as it's not living or made of Nen, a condition that makes it incredibly good at sucking up either dead or inanimate objects. We've talked about Karapika, who says his chains can only be used on the Phantom Troop, but there is also risk and physical limitations that make your Nen stronger. Technically, Technically, it is easier to admit Nen from the tips of your fingers. That's where you touch things and therefore admitting from there is easier. This is why Franklin cut off the tips of his fingers. By making it harder for himself to admit Nen, his Nen bullets that he admits from what used to be his fingertips are now stronger. Or look at Shoot when he was fighting against Yuppie. By covering one of his eyes, his Nen techniques got stronger because the more risk you take in the more physical difficult you make it for yourself to use these Nen techniques makes your Nen techniques stronger. There is technically ways to have these self-imposed limitations and also bypass them, meaning that you don't have to deal with the handicap, but you can also get the strength boost. We've seen this in Crollo with his ability to use two techniques simultaneously, but that's rare. That's it. That actually only took me two hours and 15 minutes to film. That being said, I did skip a lot of very minor details. This is more to serve as a basic understanding of Nen as a power system. If you guys want additional information on Nen, please let me know. I got pretty much everything there is to know about Nen trapped up here, and I could talk for 24 hours about loan types or collaborative types or Nen beasts, but I feel like it's better to get the general idea of Nen out to the masses and not confuse anybody. So if you're not confused, and better yet, if you actually understand how Nen works now, please guys, for me, like this video, subscribe to the page, and hit that noti bell. And if you really liked this quick and efficient little lesson on Nen, guys, go ahead and hit that join button and become a member of the Weeb Alliance over here on YouTube. You will not only be supporting me, but you will get three additional videos a month on top of cool badges and emotes and member shoutouts at the end of every video. I don't really have a joke here because I'm more curious about a question that I want to ask those of you who have made it to the end of this video. By the way, thank you so much for being here. What kind of Nen affinity do you think I would have?